Staphylococcus aureus is one of the most significant pathogens of humans. It causes an extensive array of human diseases, including skin infections, eye infections, foodborne illness, toxic shock syndrome, and it may have a role in sudden infant death syndrome. It is of great concern in nosocomial or hospital acquired infections. Because of our constant battle to keep this pathogen at bay, it has developed significant resistance to many antibiotics. Methicillin resistant Staph aureus, MRSA, is of particular concern. Many MRSA strains are resistant to multiple antibiotics, with some becoming close to untreatable. A growing emergency is the recent strains that are resistant to vancomycin, a last line of defense drug against this disease. Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive cocci of about one micron in diameter. It forms grape-like clusters, and the word staphly in Greek means bunch of grapes, hence the name of the species. S. aureus is catalase positive, and the catalase reaction is important in distinguishing it from another dangerous pathogen, the streptococci. Staphylococcus are common inhabitants of the skin. They are facultative with lactic acid being an end product of sugar fermentation, but will perform oxidative phosphorylation when oxygen is present. Enrichment of staphylococci is relatively easy on salt-containing medium because the genus is salt tolerant. Of the 28 known species of staphylococcus, only S. aureus and S. epidermidis are known to infect human beings. Clinical manifestations. S. aureus causes a wide range of pus-forming infections, including superficial boils and styes, tissue infections, such as pneumonia, meningitis, and urinary tract infections, and deep-seated bone and heart infections. The immune system localizes most infections, but in rare cases it escapes the immune system and cause a, can cause a deadly septicemia. One of my friends was almost killed by this organism and only through the amputation of like so her fingers and one of her foots were they able to stop the infection and she went code blue which means they had to restart her heart five times but she survived in all cases these infections cause similar pathologies an elevated temperature swelling and accumulation of pus the immune system will respond by attempting to wall off the infection in a fibrin clot Abscesses are a common formation. Mechanisms of pathogenesis. S. aureus pathogenesis results from a deadly cocktail of surface molecules and toxins. Surface proteins promote the colonization of host tissues and allow it to stick to num numerous tissues in the host. Invasins promote bacterial spread in tissues. Hyaluronidase dissolves the cementing compound between cells and allows intracellular spread. Surface factors inhibit phagocytic engulfment. For example, capsules will shield surface structures to which phagocytes can bind. Also, protein A binds the conserved restructures of antibodies, thus causing them to attach in reverse orientation and preventing phagocytes from using antibodies as an opsonin. They also prevent the signaling of other immune responses by binding IgG in a, in a reverse order. S. aureus produces substances that enhance their survival in phagocytes. Carotenoids and catalase will short circuit killing mechanisms in phagocytes. Protein A, coagulase, and clumping factor provide immunological disguises that hide the bacterium from the immune system. Finally, membrane damaging toxins such as hemolysins, leukotoxin, and leukocidin lyse eukaryotic cell membranes. These are toxic to white blood cells and will stop phagocytes from killing the bacterium. Not only do Staphylococcus strains produce all sorts of nasty infections, some strains of S. aureus produce an emetic toxin. The bacterium grows in food and produces the toxin and the toxin is heat stable and will cause a strong emetic response. That means it'll make you vomit. The disease is distinctive with its rapid onset of one to six hours. 
It is self-limiting and sufferers usually feel better in 24 to 48 hours. Because it is rare to seek care for this illness, the incidence of the disease is unknown, but is likely one of the most common types of food illness. As a young man, I went to a wedding in 1985 with my wife, and it was a nice service, but of course, it was a hot June day, and the caterer had put out the food for the dinner. Well, the bride and groom, as understandably often happens, were busy taking pictures and greeting people, so the dinner was delayed for over an hour. One of the things at the dinner was potato salad. Well, the potato salad was not put into ice and was just sitting there on the counter and over that time someone probably infected it with their hands and had gotten some staph aureus in there the staph aureus had a wonderful medium to grow in and over the next, the hour that we waited for them to come it dumped tons of emetic toxin into the potato salad well everyone ate dinner lots of people took potato salad yeah, this is a big wedding, probably two, three hundred people. We went home to the apartment because the dance was a couple hours later. Within an hour of being home, both of us got violently ill and were vomiting like crazy. And it turned out the potato salad was gone by the time the bridal party got there. They showed up at the dance and there was no guests. Within about 24 hours, we were feeling better, but that was an interesting experience. Toxic shock syndrome is yet another toxin-related illness attributable to S. aureus. This disease is an acute and potentially fatal illness. It manifests with a high fever, diffuse rash, peeling of the skin, and low blood pressure. The malady was originally identified in 1978 as an epidemic in young women that was associated with the use of tampons during menstruation. Investigations traced it to the colonization of the cervix or vagina with S. aureus. And the bacterium was inoculated to this site by the insertion of a tampon. As the bacterium grows at this site, it produces the toxic shock syndrome toxin. The fatality rate for the syndrome was 5%. Due to the reformulation of tampons to inhibit S. aureus growth, the incidence of toxic shock syndrome has been steadily decreasing since 1980. Why was toxic shock syndrome such a problem? TSST is a hydrophobic protein and has a unique ability to cross mucosal surfaces. S. aureus produces it during stationary phase and the gene is present on a pathogenicity island that is flanked by mobile genetic elements. So this actually can move between S. aureus species. So what happens is the S. aureus would grow only at the, at the tip of this tampon but release the toxin into the bloodstream and then that would go into the bloodstream and has its, have its effect. The toxin is so deadly because it targets T cells and is what's called a super antigen that overstimulates the immune system. Instead of binding in the MHC2 groove as a normal antigen will, the super antigen will interact with conserved parts of MHC2 molecules and the T cell receptor and you can see that here the super antigens here, here's the MHC class 2 molecule, antigen presenting cell, and here is the T cell. So it's binding out here. What this does is cause the toxic shock syndrome toxin to activate 1 in 5 T cells instead of a typical antigen which activates maybe 1 in 10,000 T cells. This causes a massive release of cytokines, systemic vasodilation, which then leads to shock. Both TSST and the food poisoning enterotoxin are super antigens. So that brings up a, convent, a question about toxic shock syndrome. Both the emetic toxin, SEA is called, and others, and TSST act as super antigens. Why can TSST be fatal and not the emetic toxin? The correct answer is C, location, location, location because the emetic toxin is in the intestines and doesn't penetrate into the bloodstream, it can't overstimulate the immune system as much. TSST does move into the bloodstream and cause its effect. Okay, that is it for Staph aureus.